in a previous professional chapter in my own life, I practised as a, as a psychotherapist and I always I took a particular interest um, in the literature and research around loss. And generally speaking, I think the ordinary person, I hope I'm not underestimating them, tends to associate loss and grieving with the loss of a loved one. But the literature will tell us that that, that loss, that we can go through the same stages of grieving, but maybe not as acutely so, uh, when we lose many other different things that we take for granted in life. That, that can include loss of, loss of health, loss of status, loss of routine, loss of friendships, loss of work colleagues, loss of work, loss of business, loss of a partner present during labour, uh, loss of a partner present during uh, appointments, pregnancy related appointments, loss of hugs, loss of granny, loss of granddad, um, loss of work colleagues, loss of joy. Uh, my sister sent me a photograph on WhatsApp recently uh, of myself and herself and her husband outside Mulligans this time last year, uh, kind of celebrating the drawn All-Ireland game. And the picture really hit me. Uh, right between the eyes, uh, I saw just in one little moment encapsulated what's been taken away from us. There we were with not a care in the world, drinking our pints, people around us very happy. Uh, and all of that has been robbed of us. And in the literature, ministers, they tend to say, generally speaking, that there are five stages uh, in grieving a loss. And the most underestimated response to loss is anger. When people don't get to express their feelings around the loss uh, that they've just experienced. And I've, I've elucidated just a few of those kind of losses. We could, we could have a huge, much more long, longer list than that. But as a parliament and as a society, I think we need to watch out for anger. I think there is a huge amount of unexpressed anger in society at the moment. Now, I'm particularly taken with the emphasis and the research work done, and I'm looking forward to what you're going to produce uh, in practical terms, because there's a good roadmap there. I think it's in section six on resilience and community, and the work that Spun Out has done, particularly with that generation 16 to 24, 25, who, as Tony Bates said in the uh, Irish Times article this morning, you know, have suffered more than most because it is the time where they develop primarily through contact and interactions with their peer group and that has been denied to them. And do we begrudge them when they break out of the rules a little? And I would side uh, with Tony Bates on this. We need to practice the rules, but we need to be human too, and, and stop, maybe, resist pointing the finger. We need to give people hope. So how do you give people hope? Um, generally, you know, when we get bad news, you know, we, we learn to live with it, cope with it, absorb it, internalise it, digest it, uh, grieve the consequences of it, and move on. There's no moving on with this pandemic because we don't know when it's going to go. So this means that there are going to be continued losses carried on by society. I often wonder I often think of, of someone like uh, Dr. Maureen Gaffney, how uh, useful her morning piece with Gay Byrne on the radio used to be years ago. She psychologically analysed a nation and dealt with their problems. I know there's a lot of this stuff goes on in social media, and it's really positive. I think the government needs to step into this space. And I think one useful thing we could do, Minister, and it's not for you, it's for the Cabinet, we need to do something special for people this Christmas. Whether it's to give city and county councils uh, significant budgets for just fantastic public lighting displays that people can go out safely and just admire. We need to put some thought into this. It is going to be a Christmas like no other. 
and I think the state needs to step in. All the messages people are receiving from the state, and I looked at the makeup of Neffet this morning, and there's such a fine body of people there, generally medical, uh, and actually the people who have, I, I hope I'm not being harsh on them, who have a, a, we'll say, a psychological, mental health, well-being background are on the administrative side rather on, than on the medical side. And we tend to do this in Ireland, separate uh, physical and mental health from each other instead of looking at them as one integrated piece. Now, we have a big task as government on the mental health and well-being piece. People across society, even people who have been virtually unaffected by the virus, have suffered losses. It could be that they just can't go to see their son or their daughter playing the local sport. That's a loss. And people are angry about that. And government needs to acknowledge that. And in its messaging, we need to find a way to give people hope. Hope has been missing from an awful lot of the messaging coming from government. So we need to devise a way to give, some people, give people something to cling on to, something to hope for, whether it's the promise of a great festival, the likes of which has never been seen in the country, whether it's devising some ways of memorialising those people who've been lost to COVID, even now, at distance, in our churches, in our places of worship, or in a humanistic way. So there is much good. I'm looking forward to the outworkings of this, the spun-out investigation into the needs of younger people. Uh, but this is a cross-society uh, need, a cross-society requirement. Minister, bring this back to your Cabinet colleagues. Watch out for anger, the most un underestimated response to loss. Thanks, Ken Corbyn.